This is Math 432, Applied Combinatorics. I am Professor Asaf. Last time we talked about weak compositions. Here's an example of a weak composition. It's a non-negative string of numbers. We can think about it graphically by thinking about each of these parts as a row length. So this would be a row of length 3, 0, 3, 1, 4, 0. A composition, sometimes called a strong composition, is positive integers. So we can think about taking this and compressing out the zeros, and we would end up with this strong composition. Of course, every strong composition is a weak composition as well. The third type, and the one that's going to be the subject of this series, is partitions. These are a different string. I think about a composition and I stop caring about the order of the numbers. I think of it as a multi-set of numbers instead. When I do that, I might as well put them in some canonical order. And I tend to like gravity, so I'm going to let the parts fall down. So this is going to be a sorted string. So we'll have 4, 3, 3, 1 is the example. And it's a very different object, as you can tell from the fact that we used very different colors. So let me write the definition here. So definition, uh, partition, let's emphasize it. A partition is going to be a weekly decreasing, a weekly decreasing, that means each part is greater than or equal to ne the next, decreasing sequence of positive integers. So this means that we're going to have lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda 2, greater than or equal to on and on and on, greater than or equal to lambda k. And if the parts add up to n, then we say it's a partition of n. So this um, is what we'll usually call n. So this example that we have, 4, 3, 3, 1, this is a partition of 11 into four parts. So partitions are much more challenging to enumerate than compositions or weak compositions. They have the same advantage in terms of their finiteness as the compositions, but let's see how they're a little different. But let's, let's think about them first in terms of um, maybe an example. We haven't done a full example yet. So let's do an example. Let's do an example, and I want to list all of the partitions of 5. Okay, so a good way to do this um, is just to go through them lexicographically. So start with the biggest. It's easier to, I think it's easier to generate the partitions, 5. Okay, 4 is the next biggest number, and then I need 1 left over. No other way to do it. 3, and then I have to have a number 2 afterward, or I could have 3, 1, 1. Now things get interesting when I start with a two. The next number cannot be three. That's fine for a composition. It's not okay for a partition. The biggest the next number could be is two. And then I have one left over. Or I could have done two, one, one, one. Or I could have done all ones. And if you start with a one, the whole string has to be one. So how many partitions of five are there? Well, there's seven. Whenever the number seven comes up when you're enumerating something, you should maybe panic that there's not going to be a closed formula. And in this particular case, there isn't. There is no closed formula for the number of partitions of n. We do know an asymptotic formula, which I'll write down, so we know roughly how they grow. So p of n is approximately equal to 1 over 4 root 3 e to the pi square root of um, 2n over 3. So this is faster than a polynomial. So faster than a polynomial growth, and it's slower than an exponential uh, because of that square root. So it's, it's somewhere in between. But we can still think about different ways to enumerate them. So one thing that, that helped us with weak compositions and with compositions was thinking not just of partitions of n, but partitions of n into k parts. So let's think about that. Let's try to let, or let's let um, p k of n equal the number of partitions of n into k parts. So as an example, 
Um, let's look here. We know here that, um, maybe I can write it this way, that P3, three parts, total size five, there are two of them. Let's do another, let's do another example. So let's do P3 of eight. This is actually easier to do, as is most things in dominant forks, if you just get some parts and start playing around with them. So we need eight parts, so let me grab some parts. All right, now I've got eight parts. It's easier not to use Lego and just use freeform bricks. So I only want three, so I want exactly three parts, okay? So I'm gonna start by just lining up a wall of three. Okay, that's gonna give me my height. And now I need to use all these blocks. Well, I could put them all at the bottom. What would that give me? That gives me a row of six, and then I've got two short rows, six, one, one. Okay, now I could, if I want that bottom part to be five, I get this extra guy, it has to go here because of the gravity idea of partitions. So then I can get five, two, one. That's another one I could get. And what else could I do? Well, I could put this one up here or up here. So I've got this solution, which is four, three, one, or this one, which is four, two, two. Now, if I had four, three, one, I could move this guy up. And that's the same as if I do it this way. So there's only one more, which is three, three, two. So that's it. That was kind of fun. Let's do another example. Examples are great. They help us build our intuition. Let's do P2 of seven. What is P2 of seven? So now I've got seven bricks, bye. And I'm only allowed two parts. So better wind it down here. Six ones, my first one that I could have, six one. Okay, and then I can move this up to here. Can't go up here, remember, I've gotta stick with my two parts. Okay, so that's five, two. And now I could bring this guy up again. And I've got four, three, and that's where I stop. Because if I bring this up, well, I violate gravity. So that's it for those. And you know, it might be worth just writing down here. We saw this, um, P3 of five. What was that? Well, those are my two right there. I have, um, I'm gonna write it down here. Three, one, one, and two, two, one. So maybe now you can think about an interesting fact. So here is the fun fact that might help you with your homework. Five is equal to three plus two. Can you see why? Obviously we know that five is three plus two, but it is in a very nice way. And in fact, there's a recurrence relation that helps you compute the number of partitions of n into k parts, and proving that is part of your homework. Doing examples is a great way to build intuition so that you can do your homework.